Hey everybody, Vivian here with another tutorial as an educator for Scraps of Darkness Kit Club. I will be focusing primarily on using items from their color and creativity add-on. This month's December 2012's uh, color and creativity add-on comes with a canvas, a square canvas, so I was really excited to be able to use that. Uh, it also uses mists and sorbet from art anthology, as well as a product you may not be familiar with. I actually wasn't prior to joining the team at Scraps of Darkness. It's called Angelina Fibers, and they're entirely made of um, polyester, and they've got a beautiful shimmer. They add great texture to your project, as you can see as I'm panning. I just learned how to pan on my uh, video editing programs. I'm really excited about that so you can see close up how everything works. Um, so there are many ways to use Angelina fibers. I'm just going to show you one. So I don't know if you've played with masking tape, but it's a great way to add texture to your projects. I like to use a really wide roll of masking tape and rip it into shreds and wrinkle it on my project. Here I'm wrinkling it on top of a square canvas that came with the kit. I also, also often do this with tags, but because I use so much media, uh, it's really important to get a really good quality thick cardstock. And in this case, because we're using a canvas, we're not going to run into any problems with um, warping of your paper. I gessoed the canvas before applying the masking tape because it felt a little bit dry. I don't know how else to explain it prior to putting on my masking tape. And now I'm adding another layer of gesso on top of the masking tape just so I have more tooth for media to grab onto when I apply it to my canvas. Now I'm going to turn to some of my gelatos to create a nice atmospheric background. I start light and then I go dark. This color is, I believe, buttercream. It's one of the lighter uh, shades of yellow that come in, in the gelatos that are available. Gelatos are produced by Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft, and they're really fun media to add into your crafting toolbox. The texture is like a, 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 a lipstick, and it goes on to your projects in a really smooth way. It, it has exactly the texture of lipstick, and it's water-soluble. So some of you might like this rough look. Um, once I add in all my colors of gelato, I went in there with water and a paintbrush to mix it all together. I'm also using butterscotch. After the buttercream, I used butterscotch. And after the butterscotch, I went in with some mango. And once I've got enough of that in the areas where I want those warm colors, I'm just going to um, wet a, a paintbrush, a synthetic soft paintbrush, and blend them all together. I'm looking for a really soft, fluid background. Uh, one thing I've been working towards in a lot of my projects recently is fluidity in my compositions, and I find that creating these streams of texture with the masking tape um, and softly blended colors helps create that sense of an integrated composition. Once I finished blending all of those warm colors together, I started to go in with some darks. And the colors that I used were boysenberry and grape. Once I laid down enough pigment, I started blending those colors into my canvas as well. And one thing that I, I was trying to do, I tried to get those darks really well into those nooks and crannies that are created by the wrinkles that I set down in my masking tape. See how I'm trying to get it all in there? And the great thing about this type of mixed media technique is if you end up doing something a little bit too drastic and it's still wet, you can just wipe it off with a paper towel. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of drawing those darks 
all over my page in the same direction of my um, folded pieces of masking tape. If you apply your gelatos onto a surface that's already wet, you get a lot more intense color. Um, so I did that with some of my darks. And now I'm going to add some water, a nice dose of water into the mix, and get that color to drizzle down the little ravines created by my masking tape. And I, I just love how that happens. So actually, when you're in the initial stages of starting your canvas and you want to incorporate masking tape in this way, um, you want to sort of intentionally wrinkle your pieces of masking tape in the direction that you want your ravines to go. And it ends up creating a really organic, natural feeling um, as the media and the fluids move around your canvas. So let me zoom in so you can see where we are now. Uh, this is just the very beginning. We're going to be adding a lot more media and texture uh, and using a, a bunch more techniques so that the final result um, will be somewhat different. Um, but I think uh, you know, this effect, if you were to stop right here with this effect, you could do a lot of cool stuff just using the masking tape and media. Here I use gelatos, but you can also use a variety of mists um, and pigment inks. I've got a, a bunch of other videos on YouTube that you can check out where I, I illustrate the masking tape techniques. So these are your Angelina fibers. Um, they're very light and shimmery. Uh, they have them in a bunch of different colors. If you don't like one, you can mix it together with another to create a shade that you like. I don't really want one big piece that you could cut out, although you can do that. You can create um, sheets of your own custom blended Angelina fibers and cut out shapes um, and sort of applique those shapes onto your projects. Um, our December Creativity Add-on Kit also came with a little package of string, really cool variety of strings. Now you can set those strings in between these really um, feathery and light sandwiches of Angelina fibers. And the thing about Angelina fibers that I found out is that and when you heat it up in the way that we're about to do it, Angelina fibers adhere to themselves, but don't adhere to anything else. So in this situation right now, we're not using any other um, glue, anything that will glue things together. We're just going to use the Angelina fibers to sandwich those little, um, those thicker fibers in between. Uh, and then we're going to put those little sandwiches on our project to create some more interesting texture. It's going to really add a, a nice shimmer to your project. So this is the top of my sandwich. So I have Angelina fibers on the bottom, some little threads and strings, and then more Angelina fibers on top. Here I'm using parchment paper. You can use parchment paper. Uh, Angelina fibers also have these mats you can use. Um, I actually ruined mine. so. <laughs> So I'm just going to use this disposable piece of parchment paper. And you want to keep your iron, Yeah, I guess you just have to figure out with your iron what temperature is good. Um, I used mine on somewhat of a medium setting, medium high, and um, I'm just drawing it over the folded up piece of parchment paper. And when you open, you see everything's flattened and the Angelina fibers adhered to themselves just from the heat, the application of heat. And those strings are now embedded inside my sandwiches. I'm going to do a couple more Angelina fiber sandwiches uh, with some of the lighter fibers that come in the creativity add-on for the December 2012 kit with Scraps of Darkness. This time I'm going to put a, a dark, fringy string that comes in that add-on as well in the middle of my sandwich. 
and this is how it turns out at the end. This type of fiber can be used for uh, clothing as well and accessories. Uh, it's really cool. I can't wait to play around some more with it. So as I mentioned before, the Angelina fibers only bond to themselves. So in order to get it to adhere to another surface, you have to put a bonding agent in between the fibers and your surface. The set, the creativity add-on comes with a uh, bone ash, which is a little powder you can sprinkle in between before heating it up in the same way, covering it with uh, parchment paper and then ironing. And once you remove the parchment paper, it looks like this. And your beautiful fibers, your web of your very loosely woven Angelina fibers is now adhered to your canvas. This is a, a Prima mask that came with the creativity, I'm sorry, with the color add-on for December 2012. These add-ons are just so fabulous. I'm so excited that I get to work with them exclusively because I'm just having so much fun with them. They're put together uh, by Melinda and she just does such a great job. Thank you, Melinda. So I've laid down my Prima mask and I'm going to apply on top using a the edge of a credit card or, or some other type of plastic card some baby blue eyes sorbet from Art Anthology. I, I knew I was going to use the baby blue eyes and I just love the way that blue color cons uh, contrasts with the yellows and oranges that I've got underneath. Uh, I think they really set each other off nicely and one makes the other look more brilliant. After using my mask and the baby blue eyes along the periphery of my canvas, I used a paintbrush to draw more of the baby blue eyes along the network, that fine network of fibers, Angelina fibers, on my canvas. And in various places to get that masking tape, get into those nooks and crannies of the masking tape as well to bring out that texture. Um, a really cool side effect, and I didn't know that this was going to happen, a real cool side effect of dragging the sorbet along my Angelina fibers was that later, when I added really dark mists, the dark mists didn't adhere to the areas of the fibers that I had applied paint to. The mists settled underneath and you had that, um, I had that bright baby blue eyes on top of on my little network of fibers and they really popped very nicely against the very dark background ultimately when this project was done. So this is where we are right now. And I wanted to share with you a little bit of sketching that I had done prior to making this canvas. I already had a composition in mind, and um, I, wa I, I had been finger painting and playing with gestures and blooms, and actually I had a layout that I did a couple months ago that I ended up not liking very much, but I did like the gestures that I came up with to create really like hints of blooms or stylized blooms. And um, as you know, I, I love the garden. There's, you know, flowers that go to seed, not the bulbs, end up producing, some of them end up producing so many seeds for me. So I decided to use hot glue to create um, some seed capsules, some sort of fantastical seed capsules all along the bottom corner of my canvas. And um, sort of an evolution from seed to bloom. So I used my hot glue gun like a paintbrush to create my really stylized blooms and my seed capsules slash eggs. <laughs> um, and once that was done, I went over my project, all the raised hot glued areas, with some more media. I want to take a second to talk about my hot glue gun techniques because a couple of people have commented on my Facebook, my public Facebook page that they've had some difficulty with it. Um, the manipulating the hot glue gun, you just got to do. 
uh, to be able to get some skill with it. And um, in terms of the media that you apply on top, any if you apply the pigment inks on top, I will tell you truthfully, it takes a really long time for them to dry. And even when they do dry, there's if you wipe it, it'll come off. So this would be good for projects you don't plan on really handling very much if you apply pigment ink on top of your hot glue gun effects. I had done that in my last video with Scraps of Darkness, um, and I, I neglected to tell you guys that, that fact. And if you're a little bit worried about it, I might spray some um, fixative on top, and you can get fixative on, from art and craft supply stores. But I just wanted to take a second to tell you guys that, because, yes, if you apply pigment ink on top of your hot glue gun effects, you will have to wait a very long time for it to dry, a few days. I always just set it aside for a few days. So I just poured some Colorations Mist from Art Anthology in the color Focus. It's a very dark, dark brown into a mini mister. And I'm going to do my drizzling technique. So I'm just going to spray that very heavily on top of my hot glued areas. And the areas with the hot glue um, will continue to be raised and will apply media on top later. But by spraying this dark spray underneath, we'll really get those hot glue areas to pop. And once I get enough of that mist on there, it's quite a bit, um, we're going to start drizzling. So you're going to turn your canvas this way and that to get your mists to go where you want them to go. Your ravines created with your masking tape and the ravines created with your hot glue gun will help those mists go where you want them to. And the goal is to get those dark colored mists into all the nooks and crannies that you've created. And as you can see, I'm using water to dilute it in various areas and get it to move around a little bit more freely. Let me just zoom in so you can see where we are just now. So the hot glue areas are still translucent. And this time I thought I'd play around with some other media that are a little bit, that, that dry more quickly. I colored over the raised hot glued areas with a fine metallic painter's pen. Um, and after I had covered all my hot glued areas with that painter's pen, the metallic pen, uh, I also added in some more black pigment ink along the bottom uh, to accentuate the darkness of that area. I wanted it to be a little bit darker. Mm, and I found that the pigment ink on top of that dry painted surface also dried more quickly. Uh, like it, it was possible for me to touch it within several minutes and not have it come off on my fingers. So at this point, I stepped back from my work and looked at it. I actually went away and had a cup of coffee and came back because I wasn't sure what to do next in terms of what I should add. And I felt like it needed more hot glue. So I added just some more um, tightly packed activity uh, in line, very much in line with the subject of my last video for Scraps of Darkness, which was Concentrated to Diffuse. And this composition very much is about Concentrated to Diffuse. You've got these blooms sort of opening out into the open air, but you've got this really tight cluster of seed heads um, and sort of abstract circle shapes in the bottom left-hand corner of the project. So added some more elements and tiny little uh, pellets inside the the capsules to represent seeds or or eggs, if you will, and um, I went in and I painted those also with more gold and black pigment ink. I think these blooms were helped along quite a bit by the addition of just a few more stylized petals. Um, it added a sort of grungy but decorative 
element to the project. And then, like I said before, so I had more, I put more of that gold metallic pen on my, my hot glued areas. And then I added some more black pigment ink um, to the bottom portion of my painting. So I'm going to zoom in and show you my final project. I felt like it was done at this point. So we've got our Angelina fibers, we've got some masking with Art Anthology sorbets, we've got more of the hot glue that I love so dearly, and this time uh, it's a lot more permanent and a lot more quickly permanent, those painted effects on top of So I've got some stills to show you. This is a full shot of the finished canvas, and I've got some detail shots as well. These are those blooms along the side of my bouquet, my stylized bouquet. Um, and I'll show you some more. At the end, I'll show you that tightly packed cluster of capsules. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and joining in with me as I grow my craft. I'm really excited about this opportunity with Scraps of Darkness. And if you haven't gotten enough inspiration, well, please subscribe to my channel. It's Contadina K on YouTube. And my blog is contadinak.wordpress.com. I'm also hooked up in the ether with Twitter and Pinterest and Facebook. So I hope to see you in the ether. Thank you so much. Bye.